As we continue our series on wellness, this dynamic Old Testament biblical story was the lectionary text for this Sunday selected by a committee several years ago, but relevant as it can be today. Today's wellness message is simply about how we treat each other. We as humans live in community with other humans, through families, love relationships, situationships, look it up if you don't know what that means, work relationships, church relationships, neighbors, and other human-to-human -human relationships. We also live in relationship to all creation, but that's another sermon for another day coming soon. But today, today I want to continue from last Sunday and speaking about how we treat one another and how this relates to wellness for how we treat each other matters. Now, lest someone thinks that addressing how we treat one another is not fair game for sermons, unless you think human behavior and our behavior is not within the realm of fair game for Sunday preaching, let me remind you of what you may have learned as a child. We called it the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I hope as you grew older, you learned its connection to our scriptures. The greatest commandment is named by Jesus, love your neighbor as yourself. Again, even when I don't necessarily intend to preach on love, the spirit brings me back to love. But you don't have to take my word for it. It was the apostle Paul who said, now faith, hope, and love remain these three things, and the greatest of these is love. And if by chance you have problems with Paul, then trust Jesus, for Jesus said it most succinctly. In John 15, 17, this is my command, love each other. Jesus named it a command because the people were committed to keeping commandments. So Jesus says, in essence, then let me put it like you like it. This is my command, love each other. High Park Union Church, we know this, we know it so well that it's also intertwined directly and indirectly in our mission statement, which is on the cover of your bulletins. The mission statement of High Park Union Church is to celebrate God's diversity among us through inclusive, open and affirming Christian fellowship and service, to welcome and honor each person through all stages of life, and to pursue God's justice in the world with the promise of joy, liberation, and love. So our parents taught us the golden rule. The apostle Paul said it, Jesus commanded it, and as a church, we've missioned it. But how do we live it, stay true to it, live by it? I've learned over my years that part of the process of learning to do anything is also learning what not to do. Our message title today, First Do No Harm, some of you may know this statement well. It is known as the Hippocratic Oath that some medical schools ask their students to take. According to an article from Harvard Health, these are the words of ancient Greek physician Hipp Hippocrates from one of his works titled, interestingly, of the epidemic. First, do no harm. Sometimes we learn what to do by first learning what not to do. This statement is powerful because it basically acknowledges that we have the ability, the power, if you will, to do harm. Yes, we as humans, like doctors, have the ability to do good, but we also need to recognize that we also have the power to do harm. 
And we have the power to do harm as we live in relationship with others. I know this is a long intro, but and I'll get to the text in a moment. Stay with me. I, I think I've shared with you that sometimes the spirit speaks to me by putting music in my spirit day after day after day until I agree to put it in the text. <laughs> The song this time, I didn't even know real well. I only knew the refrain and I had to look up the lyrics. But the song is a current hit by R&B artist. Her name is H period, E period, R period, her. And the song title is You Can Do Damage. Stay with me, hear these lyrics. If I let you, you'll take me for granted. Yeah. If I'm worth more than you could manage, yeah. Open with me, we could be honest. Closer to me, oh, giving me solace. Promise that you won't let me fall. Holding me tight, loving me right, giving me life all night. You could be telling me lies, making me cry, wasting my time the whole time. So just be careful what you take for granted, yeah. Cause with me, you know, you could do damage. You could do damage. You could do damage. The artist heard describes the vulnerability of relationships. Yes, loving intimate relationships, but this does not only apply to partner, spouse, couple relationships and situationships. They apply to any relationship because in any relationship, we make ourselves vulnerable. And the reality is that as humans, we can do damage to people we love if we're not careful, mindful, intentional about how we treat one another. And if we're not aware of our own sense of wellness or unwellness, as Liz put so well, that you cannot talk about wellness without talking about unwellness, we can indeed do damage. Damage has been indeed done to many. Humans don't come to earth taking the Hippocratic Oath. But we all know how the power to do, we all have the power to do good and we all have the power to do damage. And I'm led today to lift this up for us before we close this series on wellness. Might get a little uncomfortable, but if you stay with me, I'm confident the spirit will bless us all. Our scripture today is the perfect scripture for teaching us what not to do. You might have picked that up as it was being read, what not to do in human relationships. Today's text does just that. It teaches us what not to do for the reality is we can do damage. This story is the story of complex family and faith relationships of Elkanah and his two wives, Hannah and Penny. Of the two wives, Penina had multiple children, sons and daughters, but Hannah had no children. Let me provide a quick overview of the complex matter and harm, even damage being done throughout this story. Number one, in this culture that practices polygamy and that has childbearing expectations on women, Hannah cannot bear a child the societal expectation can do harm. If a woman could not bear a child back then, and even in some cases today, it was believed that as verse five says, that the Lord had closed her womb. The belief, this theological belief can do harm. Elkanah has one wife, Penina, who has birthed many children, but the text strongly implies that he does not love Penina. Therefore, Penina has been harmed. Penina, although she has birthed many children, is jealous of Hannah, likely because even though Hannah has no children, she does have their husband's love. So out of envy, severely provokes Hannah for her inability to conceive. So much harm. 
Hannah is so distraught that from the taunting that she wept and would not eat. Proof she's been harmed. Elkanah experiencing his wife's Hannah's, if I can call it depression or her depressed state, says, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than 10 sons? Harm. Hannah continues to be distressed for what Elkanah said was not helpful. Instead, it was more harm, and I'm almost done, but not before the priest gets in on this. Hannah is weeping, praying silently, but her lips are moving, and because of this, the priest, Eli, thought she was drunk and says to poor Hannah, how long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. He clearly did not know the Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. Breathe with me. That was a lot. And sometimes it is a lot. Sometimes when people are suffering, when we are suffering, it comes at us at every angle, nonstop. Reminds me of that commercial, cow gone, take me away. Some of you all too young to, you know that? She'll, she'll know that one, y'all. There was a commercial with a woman who had had enough, and she said, Calgon, take me away. Calgon was a bath salt, so she put it in the water. <laughs> in all seriousness, life can be difficult. I remember when I did my field dead studies at Covenant United Church of Christ, Reverend Ozzie Smith Jr. is the pastor, Reverend Dr. Ozzie. And if I took nothing else, and I took much from that experience, but one thing I took was Reverend Ozzy often lifted up this reality that life can be hard. He had recently lost his wife by the time I came to, to serve there in, in my field education. And it was a current, it was a, often a theme in his sermons. And I had never heard that from the pulpit, a minister acknowledging that life can be hard, but I'm here to tell us and know and acknowledge the truth that life can be difficult. Let us come to understand the power that we have to do harm. As her says, we can do damage so much that we need to be intentional to first do no harm. So here are a few lessons from what not to do based on the scripture. First, let's be careful blaming things on God. Hannah had been unable to have children, and this was indeed the belief at the time that God had closed her womb if women were suffering from infertility or for some reason a couple was unable to bear children. They believed because they did not have the medical advances that we have today that surely it must only be because God closed their womb. Can you imagine being a woman in a society that places value on you by your ability to bear children and you've been able to eight, unable to do so? And if that's not hard enough, you're made to believe that God did this to you. Can you imagine the pain of that thought process? Some of you can. I hear you saying we do live in a society that strongly feels that way. We must be careful blaming things on God because this can impact someone's faith life for the rest of their lives. And their faith lives may be the only thing that will help them survive. And the reality is that this thought that God closed the woman's womb was the only explanation back then before medical advances. In this instance of fertility or infertility, but now doctors understand more about infertility, which partner needs the medical care and treatments that might help. So first do no harm by not blaming things on God when you don't know clearly what you are talking about. Can you imagine the women who have lived down the centuries mad at God for closing their womb? 
you can do damage blaming things on God. This is what not to do. First, do no harm. Second, do no harm by recognizing your power, the power of your words, the power of your treatment or mistreatment. And if it comes from a place of unwellness, seek wellness. Several people in the text display the power to do harm. Penina does harm to Hannah because she feels no love from Elkanah. Elkanah does harm to Penina by favoring Hannah. Elkanah does harm to Hannah by asking, am I not enough in the midst of her depression? The priest does harm to Hannah by assuming and accusing that she, her of being drunk. Let us recognize that if you have ever never recognized it before that you have the power to do harm, our country is built on the harm that was done to Africans through the history of slavery, to the indigenous people on this land, the enslavement, the mistreatment, the discrimination did harm. We still see the harm throughout society today. Let this remind us that even in our own relationships, we as humans have the power. Yes, to do good, but we almost must acknowledge that we have the power to do harm and we must commit to first do the best we can to do no harm in our own human relationships. And if by chance that propensity to do harm comes from the harm that was done to you, if by chance you are bitter like Panana because you were harmed because hurt people do hurt people, if you have the habit of inflicting your pain on others, seek help. We're not in biblical days anymore. We are in the days of therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, meditative practices, and good old walking away. Be committed to first do no harm by getting help for the bitterness you have for the harm, from the harm that was done to you. I know I'm meddling today, y'all. Keep praying for me. So first, do no harm by not blaming things on God, lest you hinder someone's faith life. Do no harm by realizing your power and choosing not to inflict pain on others. Thirdly, do no harm by seeking understanding of not only what ails you, but what ails your loved one. Elkanah has two wives. One has had multiple children and one has had none. He apparently does not love Peninnah and she knows it. And Hannah is distraught and he asks, am I enough? You know, I, I was going to come hard, come down hard on Elkanah. I told Pastor Sarah that I was, ooh, I was ready to get him for that statement. How can you take this woman's anguish and make it about you? Then the Lord showed me myself. I realized that when we don't understand what our loved ones are going through, we'll start saying and doing things that are inappropriate, including making it about us, because we simply do not understand. So do no harm by learning, if possible, about what ails your loved one. If your loved ones have depression, start studying depression, lest you think you and your children should be enough. If your loved ones have dementia, start studying dementia so that you understand what is happening right in front of your eyes. If you are in close loving relationships with someone and something is not quite right, and you feel the, the tendency to make it about you because it does affect you as well, Avoid taking it personal. First, do no harm by first seeking understanding. Protect yourself from harm in the process as much as you can. But, but as a proverb says, in all thy getting, get an understanding. I'm grateful for our health and wellness team for committing to help us with understanding some of the ailments that are prevalent in our community. I'm grateful for Jay and Alice Mulberry for setting the example of a loving relationship that is seeking understanding, trying not to do any harm. 
So let's learn about the ailments that impact our people, our loved ones. If you feel yourself taking it personal, come to learn what it is that they are dealing with. Find compassion and seek help for yourself. And then we can't finish until we talk about the priest, Eli, who assumes then accuses that Hannah is drunk when she was simply praying out of her anguish. Do no harm by not making assumptions. You already know what they say about making assumptions, so I don't need to go there. <laughs> Seek to do no harm by asking and listening. If you are curious about the wellness of a loved one, a neighbor, or a friend, ask. And then if they choose to say something, listen. That's much better than assuming and accusing and being wrong. And as your pastors, if you come to us or if we notice your pain, we will listen, we will pray, and we will do our best to guide you to helpful and even professional counsel, the Lord being our helper. And if by chance people with all the right intentions still do harm, even if your loved one says the wrong thing, even if your neighbor treats you poorly, even if the church member gives you a strange look, and even if someone else does you harm, let me encourage you today that God has the last say-so. God is indeed able to do rightly by you. For God is love, and God is able, and God is real, and God is faithful. You see, with all the drama in the text, may I suggest that the first step to do no harm is among the last steps that Hannah took, and that was to pray. Listen to Hannah's prayer, O oh Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servants and remember me. And the Lord remembered Hannah and she was ultimately able to give birth to Samuel, not to put a pretty bow on the story, for every story does not end with a pretty bow. But what I know for sure is that God answers prayer. What I know for sure, and I encourage you today, is to trust God with your situation. For if you're like Penna and I and you're in a non-loving relationship, take it to the Lord in prayer. And if you're like Hannah and you're suffering a condition and you're getting it from every angle, take it to the Lord in prayer. And if you're like Elkanah and you're living with someone with a condition that you don't understand, take it to the Lord in prayer. And if you're like the priest Eli and you put your foot in your mouth, apologize and then take it to the Lord in prayer. And I just believe that we serve a God who answers prayer. I believe that God will answer and will lead you and guide you before you even realize that it's God. First, do no harm by being mindful of our power to do harm, careful with how we treat people, mindful of our own pain and seek help, careful about our assumptions. Listen and learn and in all situations. Seek God in prayer. God may not answer the way you want God to answer, but I just am led to trust God's answer more than I trust how I want God to answer. I leave you with this scripture, for if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, God says, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will we hear from heaven. God will forgive our sins, even towards one another. God will. God will. God will heal the land. God bless you.